All right, for ladies and gentlemen, John Sweet P here. And since you are seeing this screen, that means it's time for a brand new Dynasty Warriors 3 Extreme Legends campaign. The fourth in the series of seven. And today, we're going to be doing the first of three people that way back in my poll got one vote each. So I had to separate them based on the disparity of content. But the next officer that's going to be played right now is Wan Shao. The imperialistic commander guy. And we start off at the Battle of Fuel Gate. Again. My lord, today we march. The battle is as good as won. We will show them the futility of their resistance. My lord, are you fighting for our lord's honor? I battle for the sake of battle. And fight only for myself. Our troops have taken their position. One shell looks ready. Alright, so we are at the Battle of Huau Gates, but this time we are the one of the Allied forces. A familiar situation, but perhaps a slightly different set of events will happen since this is the Extreme Legends version of Huau Gate and not the Dinosaurus 3 version. Anyway, an introduction to One Shao. It was Dong Zhuo of Ziliang who gained absolute power after the Yellow Turban Rebellion. And it was he who seized custody of the young Han Emperor and entered the capital of Luoyang to begin a reign of terror. Soon enough, frustrated regional leaders would answer a call by Cao Cao to form a coalition army to remove Dong Zhuo from power. The man selected to be the supreme commander of this army was Wan Shao of the esteemed Wan family. In the year 191, the anti-Dong Zhuo alliance marched on Luo Yang. A fierce battle is about to unfold at Hulao Gate, Luo Yang's key military stronghold. Alright, so same old story pretty much. We are the supreme commander against Wu Bu and Dong Zhuo. <coughs> so, there we are. We have our two somewhat famous sub-officers, Yan Yang and Wen Shu. There's Cao Cao. Xinjiang. Bit further ahead than he would be normally if we were playing this on Dynasty Warriors 3. Wu Bei, Dong Sun San, and Wan Shu, who is in Sun Jian's normal position. If we were playing on Dynasty Warriors 3. And for Dong Zhuo forces. There he is, in his usual spot, hiding in the castle. And there's the mighty Lu Pu. Whether or not he will be as tricky as he is in the original Dynasty Warriors 3 map will remain to be seen, but we will find out, probably, depending on the battle conditions. <coughs> There's the lovely Diao Chan, who we've just played as. This time she is our own officer, instead of just being the sub-officer of Dong Zhuo. And there's Hua Zong and Zai Zhu, one of the ambush people who is here a bit early. So, conditions for battle. A little bit different from doing this from the DL Chan slash Wubu slash Dong Zhuo perspective. Only you have to be defeated to Wu, not Wu Bei, Sun Jian, and Cao Cao. And victory by being Dong Zhuo, of course. So, one Shao, he uses a sword. And since we have played as a character before who used a sword, i.e., Lu Bei, we get to upgrade to the Wong Sword straight away. Which is. Why some characters do share first and second weapons, which makes this incredibly useful for the battles to come, and will probably make this far easier than it would be if we were just to use the broadsword. So we get to skip it here. Item-wise, there is a challenge I'm going to do at some point in this playthrough, as was suggested by Trent George and Vargas V, which apparently is to close my eyes, move the analog stick randomly, and pick random items. With a face cam as proof, but I may do that later on, not 
right now since this is the introduction to one shower so we'll just go with the tried and tested set of good items uh, do I want to equip a horse or nah, I don't know I'll go for bow armor actually since this is who I'll get <coughs> bodyguard wise now I'm thinking actually to um, I'm gonna take them back off crossbow because I don't think they're I don't think they're quite as oh, wow Oh yeah, that's the crossbow stats, I think. Somewhat. I'm actually going to put them back onto the spear, I think. Because, um... They're more effective with that. But I'm going to start burning up their weapons. Actually, no, I'm not going to put them on the spear. I'm going to put them on the sword. Because I want them to build up their weapons in other tiers. So, for example, I want them to get, like, the third tier sword. The third tier, um, pike. And the third tier bow at some point, just for fun's sake. I'm going to put them on attack because they'll be very effective on this map anyway. Since they're super powerful now. So, let's get on with Wan Shao and see what he's like as a character. I'll give you a hint. It's kind of similar as playing as Wu Bei, Sao Sao, and Sun Jian. They all have different movesets, but they all sort of play similar ish. So, we shall put an end to the tyranny of Dong Zhuo and Wu Bu. Yes, we shall. Dong Zhuo is at Hulao Gate. Find and destroy By the end of this battle, Lu Bu will be dead. Wow, he sounds extremely menacing there. That's pretty creepy. So, this is Wan Shao, um, the imperialistic commander of the esteemed Wan family. In the uh, Dynasty Warriors 3 and I think General War, he basically controlled a large bunch of stuff in the north. Then fought Sao Sao and lost, and then Sao Sao absorbed most of his uh, forces. <coughs> but in Dynasty Warriors 3 Extreme Legend, he's going to kick ass. So, triangle attack. As you can see. It, 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 ah, get out of my way! Oh, they play this cutscene in full. Oh, and one choose instantly dead. <laughs> okay. Not even a chance this time. It's just that's it. Wu Bu's here. One shoe dies. The end. <laughs> this is not a good start. So triangle attack, basically a nice little fast spin. Here's his first attack, basically with some up into the air. Nothing really special about that. I have defeated an officer. Soon we have, pal. <coughs> Let's do his second attack. See there, my bodyguards already getting straight into the mix of things. Basic just sort of stun attack. See there, his third attack is. Basically, his triangle attack is just a basic sort of vertical, vertical swing, and all four. Oh, now I can actually show off the uh, fourth weapon here. Move Karnai since I have the second tier weapon. So I'll just show you the attack and does an enemy. Knocks him back, but doesn't have much range, surprise. Oh, wow. My bodyguards just annihilated the gate captain by themselves. My bodyguards have become pow too powerful. I can't show off anything. <laughs> Here's his charge attack. Wow, look at that. They're just completely destroying everything. I should turn the bodyguards down a little bit, but sadly you can't change the commands mid-game. That was something that would be added later, however. You could in later games... I guess I don't think you can change the bodyguards commands, can you? Oh, you actually can! Okay. You can actually change the orders. So I can put them on defense, support, shield... I'll put them on defense for now. Oh, that's then corrected. I don't think when you could change the orders in the fly, but I thought I was introduced in the way the game, but nope, you can change the orders here. I'm not 100% sure if you could do that in Dance to Warriors 3 as well. Someone will have to check for me or whatever. <coughs> Ooh, ambush party. We're not going south yet. <laughs> Just as I had what? An ambush? What? An ambush? Oh no! Here's the ambush everyone was expecting. With Lee Ju and Gil C, no doubt. 
We normally show up a lot. Way to, of course. So let's, so let's check out his fourth combo. Whips in the air, hits him down. Nothing really special about that. We're well too beefed up for this mission, to be honest. Since we have the uh, second tier weapon for what is basically the introduction map. So, uh, yeah, he's kind of a sort of a fastish character. I mean, I kind of sort of say he's got the sort of quickish pace and weapon of like. Feels a lot like playing Wu Bei or Cao Cao or Sun Jian, to be honest, but there are some minor differences. But, you know. We just took down Zahun Doon. That's not good. I mean, Wubu is as powerful here as he was in the original. We'll find out soon enough. We may have to defeat him. Or he's going to kill all my men. So it's kind of a sort of a all-around decent character, one shall, in general. Oh, he's still up here. Again. <coughs> you know, he's a bit of a decentish character, I would say. There's nothing particularly... Wrong with his game per se, but then he's just a, maybe lacks a bit of range on some of his attacks, but wait till you see his fifth combo. It's definitely very potent. And this is Muzu attack. Swings around a bit. Hmm. Doesn't quite have the same sort of Muzu impact as, say, Wu Bei did, but pretty powerful nevertheless. Just swings forward, keeps hitting the target. And down they go. Pretty cool stuff from one shout. Obviously, if you get this weapon enough range, it does become quite potent over time. Um, it'll be once he gets his third weapon with the range, he'll be very similar in sort of his reach to the uh, free, to the Wei Wu Shu commanders. Uh oh, Gal Gal is getting his ass beat. Morale is still quite low well on this map, actually. We need to be careful. I mean, we could probably afford to lose everyone, to be honest, but rather not. Could be a bit hurry having to suddenly fight for Wu Boo because we're the last ones left. So it's oh, Guan Yu's not doing too well either. A good thing if you want someone and a friendly uh, officer to be healed, stand near them when stand near them when they are on low health, and they will heal themselves most likely. Damn it, bodyguard, even on defense mode, to gain the licks in. Oh, there's Wubu. I'm just going to quickly change the orders back to normal now, since I've kind of shown off one Shao's move set. And we will fight Lubu, it seems. Alright, which Wubu do we get? Do we get the super powered Wubu? Oh, I think we just might, actually. Oh, yes, I think we are getting full Wubu here, I think. I can't actually tell. I need to sort of determine whether he flinches or not, to be honest. He said we got the attack power of Wu Bu. Can't really tell. It's a bit chaotic here. We'll find out in a minute. Let's see. Maybe not quite maximum power Wu Bu, but nevertheless, dangerous enough. He's got the defense and the. Uh, he's got the defense and the. Uh, oh boy. He's got the defense and offense of 8-star Wubu, so this is going to be quite the challenge. Hmm. But we all know the trick for defeating him, right? Well, aside from defeating his girlfriend first. Oh. Alright. Bye-bye, DL Chan. You are dead. Please forgive me, I should have been... I have no time for the likes of you! Ah yes, a cutscene that never played out in any of my playthroughs detoured. Who are John? Face me if you dare! Take this! Wow, the Shu Army sure is busy. Yeah, he's not flinching at all. This is pretty much Max Wu Bu. We're in trouble, people. We can't afford to get swammed by this. 
So that's a cutscene that normally plays out when the Shu army of near Wu Bu in Dynasty Warriors 3. Basically, he gets detoured. It's not the best event to happen, though, because Wu Bu basically then just goes anywhere he wants and just kind of rampages. I mean, in the sort of war, he gets held back by the Shu brothers and stuff, and therefore gets detoured from killing a whole bunch of people. But, um... I'm not sure what happens after that. I think he just kind of runs off the battlefield or something because the Shu army, the Shu brother triad seems to be a bit too powerful for him. I have I've got that weapon actually. Oh no, no fate! I mean, they're not going to be very useful at this point, but you never know. And also, Guan Yu then takes care of Hua Zong, which is... I think that was also in... Which is uh, new for Extreme Legends, of course. Hmm. But this time it works to our advantage. Also, did you notice that Wu Bu's um, font was blue for that bit when it announced that he was detoured and not red for the enemy? Just an interesting little note there. Oh, it actually has retreated a little bit, Wu Bu, for some reason. Alright. Wu Bu appears to have gone over here, but I'm taking you down, Wu Bu. I did actually sort of get flinched, but I'm... Oh, wow, I just knocked him back, I think. Maybe we've just... Oh, this is going to be fun. Oh, boy. That bodyguard is trying to cost me this fight. Let's see if I can take him down without using true Muzu for once. It seems like Muzu is going to work quite effectively here. And you can see he's not flinching at all. Oh, dear. Get ready. Oh, no, some... Wow. Oh, I had to break it out there. He, was, he wasn't flinching for his triangle attack. True Muzu time! Look at that rate. Oh, wow, I actually did knock him back there. Time for the... Oh, no, you don't, Woo Boo. You're not healing up this time. Burn in the fires of hell. In a minute. You need to be very careful here. Do not want... I need to be... Oh, God. I've mistimed this a bit. Maybe I can... I need to move away from him, basically. Oh! Oh my god, this is so lucky! Get out of here! If I did not have my Muzu charge item for that, I probably would have been dead. That was extremely lucky. But yeah, basically the same strategy as always. Just true moves to him to death. Usually the best way, but the risk of course is that if you mess up once and you can't get your Muzu back and when he whacks you, you die. But the Muzu item saved my life. Great. Now we will counter attack. Uh... Stop the enemy's surge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's kind of funny actually, because Everyone aim for the enemy general. Okay, that's good. <laughs> cow, cow. I am the commander here. Oh. Troops, advance slowly. Do not let down your guard. Okay. Now I force his chain of. Oh, this is interesting. I was about to say that um, basically, um, Cow Cow is reciting his lines from the Battle of Guandu there. Pretty much. I'm surprised that all my bodyguards are still alive. We didn't mess them up too much. So, I like that lovely bit of foreshadowing there to the fact that the next battle is probably going to be the uh, Battle of Guan Du. Which is where we fight Cow Cow. I imagine that's next up on the agenda. And after that, who knows? We'll probably just fight everyone in various maps and locations could be fun as such <clears throat> I don't think there were actually any real problems with um one Shao and Sao Sao on this battlefield in the wall or whatever there are more problems with Sun Jian and Wan Shu which again isn't really explained well in this uh, game but is sort of glossed over in the fourth the glory is ours don't let the other officers get ahead Cow Cow's unit has begun pursuit without your orders. 
What? You asked me to be your leader? Yet you disregard my commands? You may think yourself to be better than Wan Xiao, but... Cow Cow, how dare he act without my permission? Oh, why? Calvin Troop is retreating. Uh, what, what, why is Cow Cow's forces been obliterated? What? Uh, what, what, what? I'm, I, I don't get it. it does, does that mean that he was killed? Or, or what? I'm very confused now. Who do we have left anyway? Oh my god. We only have Wu Bei and Gong Shun San left. Oh wow. They really gone for this theme of Wan Shao and Cao Cao being bitter enemies, but So apparently Cao Cao went in a pursuit and just just fled. Full on disappears from the battlefield. Oh sorry, was obliterated. What the heck? This is not what I was expecting, to be honest, but very well executed, I have to admit. Pretty interesting how they chose to play this out. My bodyguards just... A another kill for my bodyguards. It's a shame they don't get any extra experience for killing off officers, to my knowledge. They're just annihilating everything now. So... So ridiculously powerful. Alright, so all that's left now is just Dong Zhuo, who has come out of his base, funnily enough. He actually, he's actually come out and uh, attacked. Instead of staying in the castle, which is also kind of interesting. The joys of extreme legends. You never know what's round the next corner. Probably the only one who's furthest forward at this point, so I have no choice. I could go take down the gate. But, nah, I don't think we need to worry about that. I'll happily just kill him off here and now. Bye-bye, Dong Zhuo. When two commanders clash heads, there can only be one winner. Oh, shit. Ah, oh, no. Don't you pop your full hit combo, buddy. Uh-oh. Oh, bad. Goodbye, Dong. Oh, not dead yet. There we go. No, no, I plan. It is all ruined now. All right, battle over. Allied front forces triumphant. Ooh, that is an awesome pose. Love that. Brilliant. So, this was the Battle of Huao Gate, really weird edition. Wan Chu was instantly defeated as soon as Wu Bu showed up. Zai Zhu fell quickly. Lei Ju and Giyo Si fell quickly. One of them to my bodyguards. Then Diao Chan and Hua Zong fell pretty quickly. We had a bit of a hurry encounter with Wu Bu, but took him out. Sun Jian was wiped out by Dong Zhuo's forces. Cao Cao decided to leave the battle. And, uh, oh wow. Just below 14 minutes, the battle is done. I think that's the quickest I've ever done who I'll get on any character. So, we're gonna get a bunch of weapons that aren't gonna really add up too much. Hmm, go that one, I guess. Whatever. Ooh, do I go for the push 3 defense or the push 23? I think I'll go with the push 23 defense. Item-wise, nothing particularly special. I think the bodyguards got one item. Nope, they've already got that one. Oh, got better. Oh, better. Bodyguards only got a few items left to complete this set of ten. And thankfully, all the bodyguards survive, so they will get a bit of bonus off this. That clear time giving us nearly 2,000 points and ten worthy opponents. So let's see how that translates to character development, as, all, as always. Hoping for a point on bodyguards here. I'm not entirely sure what to put it on now. Maybe a bit more attack. So we go for 14. Oh good, they get a growth point. Actually, I think I'll just make their class major. So that the uh, general stats will go up. So we're pretty happy with all the other stats, really. I mean, they could have an extra point on attack, but... I'm more concerned about the AI rather than the actual damage they deal. So 
more health, I think. Oh, is that the item? So, we crossed up. I think they can become majors. Sure, major, why not? I think they've earned it. So, ranking wise, ooh, we even top Blue Bay's playthrough through our gate. <laughs> All my characters have so far have scored. Those that have been on this battle, anyway, have scored highly on the total points ranking. Wu Boo, then DL Chan, Wu Bei, and I top the list with one shell now. Sadly, we did not score anywhere on the KO ranking. Again, finished about, but we finished about the quickest of all. Wow, we we're pretty quick with DL Chan too, and Wu Boo. Huh? Didn't realize that wasn't. I didn't realize I was that quick with either of those. So let's pop a save and see. Shock horror, what battle will be next for one Shao? Oh my god, it's the Battle of Guan Du! I totally wasn't expecting that whatsoever. But this time, we're going to be on one Shao's side. So that's going to make this very interesting. Ooh, and our starting position is also very odd. Hmm. Not quite where I thought we'd be. So then, that was the Battle of Huau Gate from the Allied Forces perspective with one Shao. Overall, it was a bit of a mixed bag of weirdness and foreshadowing for the next fight, I think. But what were your thoughts? Um, did you think it was good how they did it? Did you think it was a bit goofy? Could they have done anything better? Were you impressed with the Wu Bu fight? And what do you think is going to happen next time at the Battle of Guan Du? I may, in fact, impose a challenge at that fight that was suggested to me a couple of videos ago. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I will catch you all next time for part two of One Shao's campaign, where we'll pick on Cow Cow. See you next time, Dynasty Warriors fans.